Welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studio for a CUBE conversation. It's really uh, a great thing that we like to take advantage of, a little less hectic than, than the show world, and we're right in the middle of all the shows is, if you're paying attention. So we're happy to have a CUBE alumni on. He's been on many, many times. Sar Galai is now the CEO of Teridian. And Sar, welcome. I don't think we've talked to you uh, since you've been in this new role. Yeah, yeah, it's been about a year, I think. About, about a year. So give us kind of the update on Teridian, what, what's it all about, and, and really more importantly, what attracted you to the opportunity? Sure. Uh, first of all, great to be here. I don't know where John is. I'm <laughs> looking for him. I mean, he ran away. Maybe he knew I was coming. Somewhere but, over the Atlantic, but, I think, you know, at 35,000 we'll feet. Follow up on that later. <laughs> but hey, you're here. Uh, so, you know, Teridian. I mean, uh, let's talk about maybe the, the the challenge that Teridian is addressing first, so people understand that, right? So, if you look about what's going on these days, you know, with the advent of cloud and and how people are really accessing stuff. You know, things have really moved in the past. Most of the important services that people accessed were in the data center and were accessed through the LAN. So you could, you know, the enterprise had control over them. And, and you know, if you wanted to access an app, if it didn't work, you know, somebody went and LAN, played around with some Cisco router and things maybe got better. Right, right? but at least you had control. You had control. And uh, if we look at what's happened over the last decade, but certainly in the last five years, was SaaS uh, and, and cloud, um, you know, stating the obvious, more and more uh, of your services now are actually being accessed through your WAN, and in many cases, uh, that actually means the internet itself. You know, if you're accessing Salesforce, or Box, or Ignite, or any of these services. And the challenge with that is that that now means that a critical part of your user experience, you don't control, that the vendor doesn't control, because you can make the best SaaS app in the world, but, and those apps are increasingly very dynamic, so you know, caching doesn't solve this problem, and the problem is now, okay, but the, my, I'm experiencing it over the internet. And while the internet is a great uh, tool, obviously, it's not really built for reliability, uh, consistency, and, and, and consistent speed. You know, reality, right, if you look at the internet was designed, right, to send you know, one packet to NORAD and tell them that you know, some nuclear missile died somewhere. That's what it was designed <laughs> for, right? So the packet will get there, but the jitter and all these things may work. And so what happens is that now you have a consistency problem. Now, historically, you know, people will say, well, that's all been addressed through traditional caching. And that's true, and caching still has its place. The reality is, though, that caching is more for you know, stuff that doesn't change a lot, and now, of course, it's all very dynamic. Uh, you know, if you're uploading a file, that's not a caching activity. If you're doing something in Salesforce, it's very dynamic, it's not cached. And so at Teridian, we looked at this problem. Uh, Teridian's been around, I think, about four years. I've been yeah. there for about a year. And we felt that the best way to solve this problem was actually to leverage some of the cloud technology that already exists uh, to solve it. And so what we do actually is we build an overlay network on top of the public cloud surface area. So instead of traditionally the way people did things is they would build a, a network themselves. But today the public cloud guys obviously are spending gazillions of dollars building infrastructure. Why not leverage it the same way that you don't buy CPUs? Why buy uh, you know, routers? And what we do is we create a massive overlay network uh, on demand on the public cloud surface area. And public cloud means not just Amazon or Google, but also um, people like AliCloud, DigitalOcean, Vulture, any cloud provider really, some Russian cloud providers. And then uh, we, we monitor the internet conditions, and then we build a fast path, if you think about it like you almost look at ways, a fast path for your packets from wherever the customer is to your service, thereby dramatically increasing the speed, but also providing uh, much higher reliability. So, so lots of thoughts. So, if, I, if I'm hearing you right, you're leveraging the public cloud infrastructure, Correct. so their pipes, if you will. And their CPUs. And their CPUs, but then you're putting basically waypoints uh, on that packet's journey to reroute to a different public um, cloud infrastructure for that next leg, if that's more appropriate. Yeah, I mean, basically what I'm doing is, I'm basically just saying, you know, if there's a, if your server's here, whether on a public cloud or somewhere else, it doesn't matter, and a customer is here, right, uh, <coughs> through some redirection, I will create a router uh, on a public cloud, so a soft router, somewhere close from a network perspective to the user and somewhere close to the server, and then between them, I'll create an overlay fast path. Okay. Uh, and then where, what it goes over will be based on whatever the you know, algorithm figures out. Uh, the way we know where, where to go over is we also have a sensor network distributed throughout the public cloud surface areas and it's constantly creating a heat map of where there's capacity, where there's problems, where there's jitter, and then we'll create a fast path. Uh, typically, that fast path will give you, I mean, one of the challenges, I'll give you an example, right? So let's say you know, you're in Comcast, and let's say you get, I don't know, 40 meg, let's say, in your connection at home. 
Okay, and then you connect to some server, and theoretically that server has much more, right? But reality is when you do that connection, it's not going to be 40 meg. It's sometimes it's 5 meg, okay? So we'll typically give you almost your full capacity that you have from your first provider all the way there by creating this fast path. Hmm. So how does that compare? So we hear things about like uh, direct connect, say, between Equinix and Amazon, uh, or a lot of peer-to-peer -peer relationships that get set up. And, and so how does, how does what you're doing kind of compare, contrast, play, compared to those solutions? Yeah, I mean, Direct Connect is sort of a static connection, or if you have an office and you want to have a direct connection, it has some, ch you know, it's got advantages and it's useful in certain areas. Part of the challenge there is that, first of all, it has a static capacity. It's static and it's got a certain capacity. Uh, what we do, because it's completely software oriented, is, you know, we'll create a connection and if you want more capacity, we'll just create more routers. So you can have as much capacity as you want from wherever you want. Where Direct Connect, you sort of say, okay, I want this connection, this connection, this much capacity, and it's static. So if you have something very static, then that you know, may be a good solution for you, but if you're trying to reach people in other places, and it's dynamic, and also you want variable capacity. For example, let's say you say, you know, I want to pay for what I use. I don't want to pay for a line. Historically, when you're using these things, you say, okay, you know, if, if the maximum I may want is, is, is 40 meg, you say, okay, give me a 40 meg line. That's expensive. Right, right. But what if you say, I want 40 meg only for a few hours a day, right? right? So in my case, you just say, look, I want to do this many terabytes. And if you want to do it at 40 meg, do it at 40 meg. It doesn't matter. Uh, so it's much more dynamic. And, and this sort of lends itself more to you know, the, the modern way of people thinking of things, like the same way as you, know, you used to own a server and you had to buy the strongest server you needed for the end of the month because maybe you know, the finance guys need to run something. Today right, you don't right. do that, right? You just go to public cloud, and when it's the end of the month, you get more CPUs. Right. We're the same thing. You, know, you just set a connection. If you need more capacity, then you'll, you'll get more capacity that you need. I mean, we had a customer that we were working with that was doing some mobile stuff in China, and you know, they needed, all of a sudden, they needed to do 600,000 connections a minute uh, you know, from China. And so we just scaled up. You don't have to pre-configure any of this stuff. Right, right. So that's really where, where you make the comparison of kind of public cloud for networking because you guys are leveraging public cloud infrastructure, you're software based, so that you can flex. So you don't and have to elastic. The old it's model. completely elastic. Like I said, yeah, it's very similar. You know, our sort of view is, you know, the compute in the last you know, decade, obviously compute has moved from a very static, I own everything mode to let's use dynamic resources as much as possible. Right. And of course, there's been a lot of advantages to that why wouldn't your connectivity, especially your connectivity outside, uh, you know, going to, which is increasingly your connectivity, also use that paradigm? Why do you need to own all this stuff? Right, right. And as you said before we turn the cameras on, the value proposition to your customers, who are the people that basically run these big apps, um, is the fact that they don't have to worry about that, but net-net is just flat out faster to execute the simple operations like uploading or downloading something to Box. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, and a good thing you mentioned Box, because they're one of our, our big customers, and I you know, said so we have a massive network. If you think about how much Box uploads, I mean, on a given day, right, there's a lot of their traffic that goes through us. Uh, but yeah, if you think about these SaaS providers, I mean, they really need to focus on making their app as good as possible and, and, and advancing it and making it as sophisticated as possible. And so the problem is then there's this last edge, which is you know, from their server all the way to the customer that they don't really control. Uh, but that is really important to the customer experience, right? If you're trying to down, upload something to Box or trying to use some website and it's really slow, like you know, your user experience is bad. It doesn't matter, it's the internet's fault. You're still, like as a customer, you're... So this gives them control. They give us that ability and then we have control of it. We can give it much faster speed. Typically in the US it may be three to five times faster. You know, if you're going outside the US it could be much faster. Sometimes in China we go 15 times faster. But also it's consistent and if you have issues, you know, we have a knock, we monitor, we can go look at it. If some customer says, I have a problem, right, we'll immediately be able to say, okay, here's the problem, maybe there's a server issue and so forth, as opposed to them saying, I have a problem, and the SaaS vendor going, well, it's fine on our side. Right, right, right. So I'm, I'm curious on, on kind of your go-to-market. Um, obviously you said Box is, is an example of a customer, and you've got some other ones on the website. Who are these big um, application service providers? <laughs> that term came up the other day, like flashback yeah, to I call 1998. Them I call them SaaS. No, it's it funny, we were talking me, about the old days. Yeah, of to me it's all ASP. Just, so, so, as a service guys. Yeah. Right, so, but then are you, are you um, is your go-to-market then going to also include going out directly through the public clouds on, on, in some of their exchanges, so that basically I can just buy a faster throughput uh, with the existing service, or because you know, kind of where do you go from here? I imagine there, you know, who, who doesn't want faster internet uh, service, period. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, so, so you know, we started off, um, going to the people who had the biggest challenge uh, and easier to work with a small company, right? You, you're sort of, you want to work with a few big guys. They also help you design, 
you know, your solution, make sure it's good. If you can run boxes, traffic, or ignite traffic, you can probably handle other things. Right. Or Lastian, for example. Uh, we are looking at potentially providing some of this service. For example, you know, we, if, if you're accessing S3, for example, we can access S3 at least three times faster. So we are looking potentially at putting something on, on the web where you can just go to Amazon and sign up for that. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at, uh, which is you know later in the year probably is that you know we have gotten a lot of requests from people that said hey, you know, since since L the WAN is the new LAN right, and they want to also uh, improve you know try to use this technology for their enterprise WAN between branch offices you know where SD WAN is sort of playing today. We've gotten a lot of requests to tr to leverage this technology also in SD WAN, and so we're also looking at, at how that could potentially play out because again people just say look why can't I use this for all my WAN connectivity? Why is it only for SaaS connectivity. Right, right, I mean, it makes sense. Again, who doesn't want it? N the network never goes fast enough, right? Never, never, never. It's not, yeah, I mean, it's not only speed, I, mean, I agree with you, but it's not only speed. What you find, you know, the, 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 what people uh, take for granted in the LAN, but is sort of, they only notice it when now they're running over the WAN, is that they want, you know, it's a business critical service, so you want it to be consistent. If it's up, it needs to have, you know, latency, jitter, control. It needs to be consistent, it can't be like, one second it's great, next second it's bad, and you don't know why, and visibility. So, you know, no one's ever had that problem. I'm, right? I'm just laughing, <laughs> I'm thinking of, of, of uh, our favorite Comcast here. They should, uh, if they're not a customer, you need to get them on your list. So, you can help make some introductions. So, so, so I think, you know, people take that for granted on their LAN, and then when they move to the cloud, they just assume right, right. that it's going to continue, but right. it doesn't actually work that way. And then they get people from branch offices complaining that they couldn't upload a doc, or that Salesforce was slow, and all these problems happen. And, and, and the bigger issue is not only the, is this a problem, you don't have control, right? You want to have, as a, as a person providing a service, you want to have control all the way. So you can say to him, hey, yeah, I can see it, I'm fixing it for you here, I fixed it for you. Right. And so it's about you know, creating that connection and making it you know, business critical. Yeah, it's just, it's just a funny thing that we see over and over and over where you know, cutting edge and, and you know, brand new quickly becomes expected behavior very, very quickly, and you know, the, the best delivery by the best service, suddenly you have an expectation that that's going to be consistent across all your experiences with all your apps. So you got to deliver that QoS. Yeah, and, and I think the other thing that we notice, of course, is because of the explosion of data, right? It's true that the internet's capacity is growing, but data is growing faster because people want to do more because CPUs are stronger, your handset is stronger, and so, so much of it is dynamic. Like I said before, historically, some of this was solved by just let's cache everything. Right, right. But today, you know, everything is dynamic, it's bi-directional, and the caching technology doesn't do that. It's not right. built for that. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different type of network. It's not built for this kind of uh, capacity. And so as more and more stuff is dynamic, it becomes uh, difficult to do these things. And that's really sort of uh, where we play. And again, I think the key is that, you know, historically you had to build everything but the same way that you have all these SaaS providers not building everything themselves, but just building the app and then running on top of the public cloud, the same thing is like, why would I, not, why would I go build a network when the public cloud is investing $100 billion right. a year in building massive infrastructure? Yeah, and they are big infrastructure. Well, Sar, thanks for, uh, for giving us the update and stopping by, and we uh, will watch the story unfold. Great to be here. Appreciate all right, it. and we'll, uh, we'll send John a message. Yes, I'll, he, have, to uh, find, I'll have to track him down. <laughs> all right, he's Sar, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. It's a CUBE conversation on our Palo Alto studios. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.